Sophia wins the second set and the match. She won tournaments at Wimbledon on her first try. She won tourney after tourney. And continued to win back-to-back -back titles all over the world. But winning wasn't enough. Harlem's own free-spirited troublemaker transformed into a tennis legend. She became known as the first black woman to take home a Wimbledon victory. Althea Gibson was born in South Carolina and raised in the heart of Harlem. Her father was a sharecropper turned handyman who had to provide for a family of seven during the Great Depression. Gibson never followed the rules. She was a strong-willed child who thought school was boring and would rather spend her time playing sports. Eventually, Althea quit school and quickly began winning tournaments under the American Tennis Association, triumphs that to her didn't come as a surprise. I knew that I was an unusual, talented girl through the grace of God. I didn't need to prove that to myself. I only wanted to prove it to my opponents. Instead of embracing the newcomer, the tennis community barred her from practicing on public courts because of the color of her skin. This treatment led her to move to North Carolina, where she began practicing with Dr. Walter Johnson, a wealthy black doctor and tennis player who would later mentor black tennis icon. Arthur Ashe. Dr. Walter Johnson convinced Althea to go back to school, and after graduating from high school, she received a full athletic scholarship at Florida A&M University. Gibson later became the first black woman to play and win at international championships all over the world, in France, the Caribbean, and more. She continued to be met with backlash from the world of tennis. She even had to take a chromosome test to ensure that she was a woman. Despite her success, Gibson was still denied access to tennis's most prestigious event, Wimbledon. It was not until her close friend Alice Marble wrote a scathing editorial piece that change began to take place. Marble was fed up with the unfair treatment that Gibson continued to face and challenged others to reevaluate the racial barriers in tennis. Finally, in 1957, Gibson was invited to play at Wimbledon winning the women's singles and doubles tournaments during her first appearance. But Gibson continued to face adversity for the rest of her career and struggled to secure sponsorship deals. When I looked around me, I saw that white tennis players, some of whom I had thrashed on the court, were picking up offers and invitations. Suddenly it dawned on me that my triumphs had not destroyed the racial barriers once and for all, as I had perhaps naively hoped. She decided to leave the world of tennis and explored golf and music and went on to achieve many firsts. She won the LPGA Tour in 1964, became one of the highest earners in the league, was in a film with John Wayne, released a jazz album, and performed on The Ed Sullivan Show. She was born for greatness and rose above adversity. I hope that I have accomplished just one thing, that I have been a credit to tennis and my country. It's a wish that was fulfilled. She paved the way for athletes of color to excel in their different sports. Athletes we know of today like Sloane Stevens, the Williams sisters, Naomi Osaka, Tiger Woods, and many more. Their journey is not easy and there's still work to be done, but Gibson's legacy is proof that progress is attainable.